wait, 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 hold on. We have the gimmick. <laughs> I know. I got, I got it. I got it. I got it. I was. You caught me off guard. <laughs> what are we doing with our lives? I love it. Oh, buddy. I we love are, it. We're at the end of the season. A season Do you know? Finale, an end of an era, I should say. An end of an era. And before we get into it, guys, I just want to uh, do a big shout out for everyone listening to on the podcast right now. Um, maybe it's because Gangplank Report is on a break, but we do have a lot of listeners on our podcast that listen to this episode. And tonight we have a very, very special guest from Gangplank Report themselves. Jen Bennington is here joining us tonight. Yeah, so excited to get her two cents on everything. And really quickly, welcome to Anchor Watch, our late night blow deck chat, where we take over Up and Adam's channel to talk about, well, Bravo's uh, highest rated show, really. The which highest. Makes us, still. Which makes us show. The, we are covering the number one rated show on Bravo. Yes. We are covering the number one rated show on Bravo right here. Um Guys, big shout out to a lot of people besides Gangplank Report and, and Jen tonight, Captain Sean, who's joining us tonight from Monaco. Also, Worth Avenue Yachts. Uh, cannot wait to see everyone at the Palm Beach Boat Show this weekend, which is going to be so exciting. And also, guys, we have merch. I was about we to have say, merch. Jason, what a lovely shirt you're wearing right now. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You know what? I think we might drop some giveaways tonight in the live chat. We have um, a lot of merch. You guys asked for the merch. It took us some time because we didn't want to do something just like flimsy and cheap. We wanted to do some really cool stuff. So, of course, this is the shirt I'm wearing tonight. We do have other colors and things like that. Hats and, of course, you know. And what I have do you to drink say, wine Jason, the, the lady's cut looks nice on you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I just need to work on the, the chest, do a little more chest, and I think I might be ready for this. Um, guys, we do have a poll running. I'd love for you guys to vote in it and just give us your – rate the season of Below Deck. 52% of you are giving it like a big yes, and then everyone else is kind of content with the season of Below Deck. Season 10 of Below Deck, I think, did not disappoint. Season 9 was awful, so it's it's really easy to come back from that. In my yeah, opinion. well, and, and remember, too, we're not just comparing them nowadays to just like the main franchise, because now there's, I think, 54 different below decks. <laughs> and so <laughs> you, have, you have multiple captains to compare the captains to. You've got 80 chief stews to compare these chief stews to. You've got 90 crew members. It's like so there's a lot to compare. So the bar is set higher and higher and higher. And when we have a good season. It's a great thing. It's a fun thing. Um, and we did it. I feel like overall, I mean, on the poll, because I had to uh, vote to get into the chat, I voted for four. Or wait, what, what did you have? Five or was four the top? Yeah, four. So I had, you know, four, four. three, two, one. Two, one. Okay. Um, yeah, a four is like is most of it. And then three, of course, too. I mean, I get it. I do have to say there was a lot of like with this is the first season I think we've had like, well, besides season nine and Captain Sean that we've had two captains kind of share the helm you know and i think that was big also i think camille and Alyssa, like them or not were kind of amazing tv because as the season progressed and we got lee back and everyone was just like in good spirits and the team was working well together i was like man i miss sandy camille and Alyssa. yeah it just went just from, to talk about yeah, <laughs> just to talk it about from, like below deck stormy waters to below deck kumbaya you know, yeah, and which uh, isn't bad. It's not bad, but I'll I'll say this now in retrospect, looking at the season as a whole, if we had the last few episodes as our whole season, while it was pleasant and fun, I think we would have been snoozing by the end, um, merely because things were going too well. And quite frankly, we're here for a story, and stories need drama. They need conflict. They need. We need to see character arcs, and we wouldn't have gotten that if we didn't have, you know, some of the challenges and challenging people we had at the top of the season. Absolutely. And I do have to say, you know, I was I was talking to someone this morning um, who I work out with at the gym, and she was like, you know, she's from Malta. And I was saying, oh, my gosh, I used to work for a yachting company out of Malta. Um, and she was like, oh, and we started talking. She's like, you know. Um, I never watched this show called Below Deck. And I was like, yeah, Below Deck, yeah. You know, I, I didn't say that we do this show or anything like that. She's like, yeah. I really liked it because I got to see, you know, this great yacht and it was kind of fun to see like my home. But then she's like, I just hate all that drama. 
it's like I had to turn it off. And I was like, oh, God, I love it. <laughs> yeah, she's all. And then the YouTubers who talk about it. Ew. <laughs> awful. Like, so awful. I mean, I was thinking about Natasha and Dave. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited. And then, of course, guys, I, I'm going to ask here at the top for those of you guys who are watching, if you could hit that like button, that tip, that's the way you could tip us. It helps so much. Um, and it's a simple thing you could do. I've been, I keep telling you guys this, but I try to be a really good YouTube citizen now. So everything I watch, I make sure I hit the like button. I even watch little videos with my son and he goes over and hits the like button. So we've, we're training ourselves to hit that like button to, to help out the creators because it really is such a simple way, but it's impactful more than you guys realize for those who are making the content. So. Absolutely. And we really, you guys are always great about it. So thank you. Seriously. Such a great view to like uh, ratio, I, you know, which is awesome. Okay, really quickly, because I want to bring Jen up from the Gangplank Report. Yes. Um, great podcast. Um, they're taking a break right now. They will be back. I can't wait because I love hearing their opinions. Um, so Gangplank, okay, what am I saying? Gangplank Report with Jen Bennington and Adrian Gang, of course, who was the original Chief Stew on Below Deck. Uh, Great. You can listen to some of the old episodes. You can go listen to Captain Carey, who we know is going to be the new captain uh, for season 11, which is done filming. Yes. Season 11 is done filming. And you, the next season of Blow Deck Men has been done filming since, I think, before BravoCon. So it's crazy how fast. And, and this is what we like to remind people is it, it takes about six weeks to film the show. So when we watch these relationships develop and um, <laughs> and, and undevelop, <laughs> yeah, it's happening. It's in yeah, we, we think of it as a two month, three month experience. And it's like, <laughs> no, no. no, um, no. And then some people are out there uh, talking about the merch. Jason, you said the merch link is a little messed up, but it does work. Yeah. So if you go to upandatomlive.com, it should work. I put another link in the live chat. We're having trouble with our little, I think it's called an SSL certificate. So we're, we're, we're getting all that. Our, our person is working on it. She's amazing. So that should be up with, uh, yeah, very soon. So well, Gangplank great. Report is taking a break, but we're not really letting Jen take a break. <laughs> yeah, we're not letting her. We, you know, Jen and I were talking, and I, I wanted to invite her to share her feelings on this season, and yeah. also talk a little bit about what she thinks is going on with Captain Lee. We've seen a lot of uh, stuff on Twitter saying that, you know, okay, why are you retiring? He's like, I'm not retiring, but then like we know there's a new captain, and and people are getting confused about what he's talking about. So I think Jen when we were talking on Twitter today, kind of clarified that a lot for me. And I was like, oh, wow. Okay. Well, good, because I need a clarification. So let's bring Jen in. Let's bring Jen up. Hi, Jen. Hi, Jen. Hi. Hi, guys. We're pulling you off of your vacation. Although it looks that like we caught you in a beautiful moment. out. Yeah, on your isn't yes. that great? <laughs> this is the closest I will ever get to a yacht, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> But you're closer than me. At least you have a picture to stand in front of. Yeah, it's, nothing. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> nice little backdrop. <laughs> I had to like represent, you know, act like I belong here with you guys. I don't feel like I do. But are you kidding? You know, I'm when trying. I when Adrian asked me to come on your guys' show and we talked, I was like so mm -hmm. nervous to come on there because I love, love listening to you guys. You guys always bring a different perspective, a little off the cuff. I really, really enjoy you guys and, and thank you for shouting us out too while you take the break we can't really of we can't course. wait to have you back of course i love you guys i seriously am here if i'm not here live because you are a little late for this old lady but <laughs> the um i'm on the replay crew and i leave comments i i was afraid because josh was being quiet in the back i was afraid because i get overly friendly like in my head i think we're best friends and I was afraid I said something like jokingly. And he's like, I can't believe Jason had this witch on. Oh, <laughs> <my God. laughs> no, Jen, I, I told you my wife's putting the kids to bed. So we were kind of I know, I know. Of like, oh, make yeah. sure this happens. They take the vitamins, blah, blah. But uh, no, yeah, I actually. I, I do rib you a lot, though, because <laughs> you like Sandy. Well, so it's like I have to. <laughs> well, and you're you're one of my favorite. We tweet back and forth a lot. I mean, oh, I, yeah. I, I, I love it. I. I keep telling people, uh, you know, comments, if you guys comment in the replay crew or if you tweet us, like, I'm active. I I love chatting with you guys. Jen knows I'm chatting with her all the time. So yeah. feel free to, like, 
And and I'm totally okay if you guys have a different opinion or you you yeah. know you have a different take. It's it's fun to hear these different ideas. Hi, and you guys have turned it, me on some stuff. So yes, I yeah. mean, listen, I'm I'm telling you, um, I. I think that's what's so great about the discussion. That discussion can't happen on Housewives, okay? Because you're you're either yeah. team this or you're team that. But I feel like on yeah. Below Deck, we can have that discussion genuinely. Well, that. and that's why I changed. <laughs> I used to be Housewives Whisperer on Twitter, and it got <laughs> too crazy. And I'm just like, no, I'm out. I'm out. Below Deck is all I'm going to do now. So that's what I do. Yeah, I don't blame you. Just enough crazy, but not too mm -hmm. crazy. I read it. Oh, I live for it. I read it all the time. I just don't jump in there because I, I'm such an introvert. I feel like they're really yelling at me. Like, oh, what do you oh mean God. you like Lisa Vanderpump? <laughs> Housewives <laughs> fans on Twitter. It's Horrible. really like, it's a very like, you know, mm. fine line to play with. I'm like, I don't yeah. think I'm going to comment on anything Housewives. But Jen, it's I like wanted to get. It's wrestling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wanted to get your opinion on season 10. What did you think overall about this season? And I liked it on your poll. I gave it the three. I didn't give it okay. a four because the Camille Alyssa stuff, it just got too ugly for me. And I like drama, but I don't like ugly drama yeah. that, that you yeah. can't recover yeah. from. So it, light drama that people can get over and then they can have a beer together after. Fine. I don't like it when it gets name calling hateful like yeah you know, too I, much. yeah i do see that um okay quick question if you had to have a favorite season of below deck no matter what the branch of the franchise is which Ooh. which and what mm. would it be oh this is not fair that you're asking me this because if i don't say adrian's i'm in trouble <laughs> <laughs> well, well i heard, you, I heard you didn't necessarily like adrian's I didn't. I did not. I had to apologize profusely. The first time I interviewed her, I was doing a different podcast and I interviewed her and I had to tell her, you know, if you go back through the internet, there might not be some, you know, very nice things about you. <laughs> because I didn't. She wasn't. Kat was fun. Adrian was all business. But then, you know, as you get older, you realize Adrian is who I would want to work with, work under, work with, work for. You know, I wouldn't want to work with Kat because I'd have to do all her work. So the older you get, you see it a little differently from like, okay, I like this person. This person makes me laugh in my 20s and 30s. And then in your 40s and now I'm 50s, it's just like, no, that person sucks. <laughs> I would hate to work with that person. So. Well, Jen, I feel like yeah. when you get older, and mature, um, you'll find an appreciation for Captain Sandy like I have. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, hold on. I don't know Every if we'll time you say there. that name, oh, the get now. the cup, Put it down. okay? <laughs> you get the cup. <laughs> but um, no. I just, I'm sure she's a lovely person. I'm sure she is. One more Go question, ahead. though. You know, um, <laughs> because when I first met Adrian, I think. I don't know if I was, I don't know what was going on. It was like Christmas when they, or right after Christmas where they replay like just everything on, on Bravo. Right. And it was mm -hmm. like season one. And mm -hmm. I'd never really paid that much attention to season one or Adrian. I just knew she was the only chief stew. And, you know, a lot of people maybe not necessarily like liked her at the beginning, but then later she got a lot of like, I saw a lot of comments, like good comments on Twitter. And I was on Twitter and I tweeted mm -hmm. her. I'm like, you know, you're not as bad as people say, you know, I think right. you're actually really good at your job. Yeah, yeah, she so. is. She's, she was too good at her job. That's the problem. <laughs> you know? she, that doesn't make sense. She didn't like TV. that. Yeah, no. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So we have all of this stuff happening with Captain Lee right. via Twitter. I, I want to hear this perspective. Jason was okay. telling me you've got some thoughts. I yes. love yes. A, good, a good theory. I, I ponder this stuff way too much. I treat it like it's a job and it's not. <laughs> this is how I keep myself busy. But with all of what he's been saying online about I'm not retiring, we know Jason's coming. We know it's in the can. It's already filmed. Not Jason. Ooh, sorry, wait, Carrie. Ca oh, God. You took me Carrie. through a loop. Yeah, I was sorry. like, wait, wait, what? Yeah. There's so many <laughs> captains now. It's, yeah. No, Carrie. Yeah. We know Carrie's coming. We know it's filmed. So it people are getting confused. And I'm getting DM'd constantly like, What's going on? Is he really leaving? Yes, he's really leaving. But if you think about it, like from a completely, like an objective fact, 
is that the hardest person to hire, if you're going to do a yachting show is a captain, right? No. They have to have the certifications. They have to be qualified. Somebody can come on. Fraser came on. He'd never been a chief stew, you know, he, and he was a chief stew. You had Eddie had never been a first mate. He was a first mate. So you can come on the show without that level of experience, but you've never once seen a captain that was never a captain before. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. it's hard to get. You've got to get somebody who's qualified and somebody who's willing to be filmed. And so my theory in all of this is because of that, they give them multi-year contracts, right? We know that. We've heard that through the production grapevine. That makes sense, yeah. though, like yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, because it's hard to get them. So you want to lock them in three to five years. So let's just say, and we're going to speak in hypotheticals because I don't want to get you guys or Adam in trouble with the Bravo gods. So hypothetically speaking, let's say that a multi-year contract was up. And for the past two seasons, they had to get a replacement at the last minute, which is not easily done. They lucked out with Sean and then they had to go with Sandy this season. Oh, hypothetically, they lucked out with Captain John and then got Captain Mandy, hypothetically. <laughs> yeah, right, right, <laughs> so, right. <laughs> okay. Wait, so, I have a picture of Captain John right here. Okay. There yeah. we go. <laughs> Captain John, there he is. Yeah. So they had to do that two seasons in a row. That's got to be nerve wracking for a network. And it wasn't Captain Lee's fault. You know, he there's nothing you can do when... He had AFib and he had back surgery. There's not anything he could yeah. do. It's not his fault. Right, but right. the converse of that is if they sign him to a multi-year contract now after two seasons back to back of that, if something does happen, medically speaking, they still have to pay out that multi-year contract. So and pay another person to come in. So they had this really untenable position to be in where they had to choose, okay, this guy's beloved. Everybody likes him. You know, he's been with us for 10 years. He's a company man. You know, do we give him a multi-year contract and lose our shirts if he can't fulfill it? Or do we go with this new guy who people really seem to like after his freshman season? And to me, I get it. I see both sides. We had yeah. we had heard rumblings but, too, just like from like the the little Bravo universe too that they were trying to kind of mm -hmm. give a, a fresh face a, a fresh face to below deck like they want it yeah. they want to kind of come and, in with and a, they're going to tell you what they're going to tell you because it's Bravo I mean we've right, all exactly. watched Bravo long enough that they're going to put the best spin on it that they can of but you course. also know that they hate 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 to break that fourth wall. And they don't want you to know how the sausage is made. So what they've done now, why it's so confusing is they've put Captain Lee between a rock and a hard place because they're not saying, yes, we didn't renew his contract. You know, they're doing like they did with Sandy replacing him last season. We knew that last March and didn't find out for sure until she showed up on screen in December. You know, we all knew it, but Bravo never said it out loud. And that's kind of the spot he's in now. So Lee stuck with, okay, I can't say that they didn't renew my contract because then I'm ruining my relationship with Bravo and I won't get Bravo con gigs. I won't get, you know, if they put him on galley talk, like you guys brought up that that was a possibility. He wouldn't get those gigs if he burns that bridge. Yeah. So he can't say that. But he has to say something so other people know because he's doing his one man show. He's done those cruises, yeah, yeah, you know, that's before right. with yeah. fans. He's got to let people know I'm not riding off into the sunset. I'm not retiring. Call me for gigs. So this is the fine line that he's walking. And, and it's a very very theory. fine line to walk. And I think everyone is doing a pretty good job at it right now. I'm really yeah. looking forward to this this kind of send off. I thought the end of the episode was kind of a nice like look at at Captain Lee. I don't think it was the send off that is deserved after 10 seasons, but I guess this is why we're oh, getting the watch what happens live special and they're and still we've heard not a lot calling that, that a send off though. From what from what I've heard, 
They're calling it celebrating 10 years of Captain Lee. You know what? So and I can see still him on leaving it like that. Yeah. Yes. And I can see him on like something else. I can see him on a galley talk. I mean, him and Kate Chastain by themselves could do a galley talk. Yeah. And, it would and be well, great. if you so... think about it, other people. Okay. So Malia, he who, she who shall not be named on our podcast, um, she's not on Below Deck anymore, but she's going to be on Winter House. You know, and Kate. Oh, yeah, we have all these w- Winter House people coming. Kate that. is going. Uh, she was just on Traders on Peacock. So keeping a good relationship with Bravo does bring you other opportunities. So I think that's why he's playing ball. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that's interesting. I don't know. That's very interesting. I love that theory. I love that Thank perspective. You. Jenna, it has been like so fun to watch you on Twitter. I think you're always like tweeting when i'm tweeting and stuff and i love it's the only i I only use twitter Twitter. on mondays yeah oh really (laughs) i have like it's like sixty thousand tweets or something so stupid like so stupid they're all from last week's episode (laughs) (laughs) yeah true the the best part about below deck i think is the community and that's i love talking to people about this and picking it apart because nobody in my family watches it and so it's like, I love hearing you guys. And that's why, I mean, even though, even when I was doing a podcast, I would still come, I would wait to listen to you guys. So I didn't accidentally like seep any of your theories into my oh, head. And I'm the same way, I, I, I didn't, didn't want to be the Carlos Mencia of the <laughs> deck reports, you know? <laughs> no, and, and I was the same way. I wouldn't listen to you guys until after we did our show mm-hmm. because you, yeah, because Especially if you say something I wasn't thinking and I think, oh, that's really clever. It seeps in. Mm-hmm. Then all of a sudden, it's really easy for it to become your own. And it's just like, oh, I don't want to do that. So, no, 100%. And, yeah, I think, you know, people say, too, like, the internet is like, oh, it's full of creeps. And, that you know, don't do anything on the internet because people are going to criticize you and stuff. But I do have to say, knock on wood, the below deck community. Beautiful people. Is mm-hmm. great. And even when they disagree or even if they, you know go a little tough or whatever yeah it's not it's not anywhere near what i see like there's some very toxic groups out there it doesn't get personal they get they get solid and on fire behind a person yeah you know Mm. that they like or dislike but they don't come at you the way some of the other communities do yeah yeah so i have fun when people go josh you're crazy blah blah blah, i I don't mind it because they're yeah part of it too is i feel like they're engaging because they feel like we're friends and we can go back and forth. Like, I do. You guys are yeah. my best friends in my head. So, <laughs> yeah, no, <I'm> sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> well, you're our best friend in our head, too. Wait, what? Wait, what? Wait, <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> what <was that>? Yeah. <laughs> Jen, I know it's late over there. I yeah. really appreciate you taking the time. Yes, to thank come you. Out here. I mean, I, this is, anytime. Is this, this is your so first, much fun. Like, live? Um, it was. And collab- I was so scared. One of my friends is in. Um, the chat, Chris Strain, he's one of my friends from Twitter, and he listens to Gangplank, and I was DMing him back and forth, and I'm like, I'm so freaking nervous. I'm like, what? you you will understand why, because we edit. I edited the crap out of our podcast, because you, I do, um, I'm a big um person. Adrian says, you know, like, it's the you know, <laughs> you know, you know, and it's like, oh, my gosh, if you say that one more time and I have to cut it out you know? well, see, all this time, I thought you were so much smarter than us. And oh, I realize no. now oh, you're God. just as dumb as dude, us. Jen. Dude, I spent hours <laughs> editing that stuff. No, I am a hot mess express. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, there's something I think it's just from where Josh and I come from, like when Thank the you, live Elizabeth, button. That's sweet is pushed we it's like we turn it's like going on stage josh it's like mm-hmm. even if you're like but whatever y'all like this have before, been on a stage boom, hello <laughs> boom. jen i would have thought Cirque you would have had LA too. people yeah no i am in a my little spare room in my house in ohio we Same. don't have you have Not your <laughs> you have your cool little anchor bells now we literally have cowbells in the country here in <laughs> Ohio. <so. laughs> hey, it's listen, a whole we were, different world. We were dinging a cup for like the longest time. So I'm yeah, glad we yeah. have bells. Elaine, thank oh, you so speaking much. Speaking of those, cups, by the way. your new merch, those those wine, those wine cups that you yes, have. Yes, I love the, these are like the some of my favorite cups, things. Like a small the anchor watch cups. You know what I'm talking about? 
Oh yeah, yeah. Just had on those screen. are so cool. I'm gonna get one of those. No, I'm yeah. sending you one. So don't worry. I I really I really appreciate you coming you on tonight. Don't have to do that. Yes, of course we you have, don't to, have support. to do that. I'm happy. You know, to how I'm many other happy below to deck? Support you. Well, we we appreciate, it. and this is the kind the of support time. you see in the below deck world. And I just have to say, you know, thank you for joining us because I know that. Of course. Besides, <laughs> the only thing we hear, if if you're, we're not talking about below deck here, it's mm -hmm. gangplank report. We hear people talk mm -hmm. about it, so. Oh, that's you know, sweet. Thanks and for, hopefully uh, we can get back to it when life gets a little less crazy. Of course. It, it's a little nuts now, but yeah. No, I love you guys. I love watching you. Well, if I'm not here live, I will be replay crew for life. So And Jen, don't get too comfortable because we'll we'll drag you back on here. So <laughs> drag it. Don't you, I tried don't to get out and they pulled me back in. <laughs> pulled yeah. me back in. Okay. So. If you're insomnia, I, you I'm always here. We'd love to have you back for, especially when sailing starts. Maybe we yeah. can we can chit chat yeah. about that a little bit too. Okay, cool. Happy to do it. Thank you, everyone. Thank Thanks, you. Jen. Have chat. a good night. I, I'm I'm not smart enough to do all the live answering, but thank you guys. All right. <laughs> Take Very care, well, guys. Bye. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for you're so receptive. The chat is so lovely here tonight to yeah. welcome Jen. Well, I everybody love knows Jen. Everybody in the community knows Jen. So exactly, it's, it's, everyone's like. You know, maybe you guys show Jason and I a little bit of that love. No, I'm kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, say hey to her replay crew. Say hey to Jen. And because uh, she'll, I'm sure she'll check it out too. So we're very, very lucky to have her. And yes, I'm glad you had her on, Jason, because you're right. That was a very, those very uh, interesting take on the Captain Lee stuff. And I see a lot of what she's saying. Like, yeah, from a production side and a this is show business, and from the business side, that's it. A lot of the things she was pointing out make sense. So, yeah, I, I mean, I agree. And um, it's I don't know, it's crazy to me, right? Oh, that's what I wanted to ask Jen. Um, if she can too. kind of confirm too that like to me and Kyle because they were they were seen filming Blow Deck Med like way back, you know, when Blow Deck Med the next season after Natasha and Dave was filmed, yeah. Um, you know, if, if she thinks they're both going to be on and if, if Toomey is going to be our chief stew on below deck med, which I would love to see Toomey, Captain Sandy, Kyle, this would be a match made in heaven. I feel, I great. feel. And, and it is wild to think that that thing's been in the can like a year at this point, right? It, seriously. Like yes. A year or something like people don't yeah. realize how like these things are. So that's, that is the other thing too, just to go back to before we talked about, um, a few episodes ago about like the cast tweets, like it's happening live, but like this, you know, the, the scuffles between captain Sandy and, and, and uh, Fraser and, and captain Lee and, and captain Sandy and how he felt about her letting go of one of his crew. They've had months to think about this. You know, we're watching the show. Almost they're tweeting, Yeah. Almost a year. And so you have to think like, they are, this is show business. They're helping put on the show. And so we have to take that into consideration when we're seeing their tweets go, because we also, we also saw, you know, within that time frame, that window of, of the, the, the season, Captain Lee almost was like kind of bad mouthing Captain Sandy. And then by the end of the season, he's praising her and Every, everyone was yay. Yeah. Kumbaya. Yeah, so yay. Rah, rah again. Yeah. That was a very interesting. Um, what did you think, though, really quick about the Captain Lee send off at the very end of the episode? Do you think that was like kind of enough? I mean, I know no. I, we all know that this Watch What Happens Live thing is happening uh, next week. And uh, it's supposed to be a big kind of, you know, tribute to Captain Lee. And we've talked about this so many times that he is kind of like the the. Uh, I mean, he's the foundation of this whole the trunk thing, of the right? tree. Yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. So. No, if, if if we did not have that special coming, I would have been so disappointed in the 45 seconds or whatever they devoted to like this kind of a recap. And so, um, no, I, th I think we deserve, a, he deserves, we all deserve like a full, let's take this moment in time and mark this moment kind of thing. Um, and, and I will say too, like, you know, as much as we love Captain Lee and stuff like that, like I am excited for what the future holds. Oh yeah, so, me too. Yeah, I'm okay with you know. Some people are like, no, he can't go, and I'm like, no, he can go. Like he did great, but now there's talk of 
Captain Carey and, you know, the- who is f- fabulous, right? Uh, on adventure in real life. Yeah. You know, we were, we did the, the um, charity event with Captain Carey live um, for his birthday and back in December. Who, and- if, if I were, uh, if I, I mean, you and I've had, we've left, I've left multiple shows and people had to take my role and stuff like that, that I helped create. And, um, and it was always, okay when you felt the person was coming in and they respected the role and they respected your work and i by all means did not expect them to be a carbon copy of me but the fact that they honored my hard work and honored what i brought to the table and were like hey i'm gonna do it my way but i'm gonna do it my way really well as best as i can to honor the work you've done that's kind of what i feel like we're gonna get from captain carry i think he's like hundred percent appreciative of what Captain Lee helped build. I think he's he's just I mean he's just that kind of guy. I can't imagine him coming in and being like, okay, now the show is gonna turn to eleven because I'm here. You know, it's it's, <laughs> it's not. It's gonna be it's gonna be a different below deck, but also things grow over time. They they mature, or change, and and you know morph and grow. So I don't know. I'm I'm happy. I'm happy. I know. Um, I agree. I I think we we had this discussion about. A lot of people who are going to miss Captain Lee have probably been watching since the very, very beginning. And and Josh, you came in, you know, a little later when we started recapping, you know, to Below Deck. So, yeah, you had me watching for like six months before. Or, no, I would probably been watching Below Deck for a year before. I mean, before Adam even had a channel, you had me watching Below Deck. And then there we go. As you guys were looking for more content, so you're like, hey, Josh, we should cover this. Like, you know, it kind of reminds me of our, our Cirque du Soleil times and stuff. And I was like, actually, that's. Did you think of that, Jason? No. <laughs> but, <laughs> I was like, yeah, that actually would be a lot of fun. It and then, really does. I mean, it really does. I mean, we talk about all the time. This is the only other industry that you really have people from all over the world who have different disciplines in what they do. They all come together, they're putting on an experience for for uh you know their yes. charter guests and everything yeah. before we bring captain sean up because we have captain sean here tonight live from monaco again so thankful to have him but i just wanted to ask you a few more questions before we get into we'll, we'll talk after sean too a little more yeah. about the episode but um can we just say <laughs> really quickly so we don't have to talk about it after ross plus katie equals Zero. Zero plus Did, zero equals zero, Jason, every time. And we've been Math. seeing that this whole season. It's like, come on. Like, we know the end to the story. It's the, the never-ending story. The of- good thing I saw from their little corner of that universe was that she had fully accepted it and was okay with that it wasn't going to go on and she wasn't trying to convince him and stuff. It was, it was getting really cringy the way she would stick up for him and oh but maybe uh, and, and the, like, the control too like back and forth a little bit like it, it just felt it was very strange it was very it, strange it was, and then i remind was, myself six weeks is that yeah. how long and you were two, on this boat? and two <laughs> immature people one just without as much life experience and then one who's stunted in growth <laughs> and so um maturity wise and so yeah uh it's funny though i've you know as as I say every week, I keep my finger on the pulse of the uh, Twitter, uh, uh, the below deck uh, Twitter community. Yes. Yes. Uh, Pulsating yeah. over there. My, ne- my next question is to, because. Well, no, I was going to say real quick, Jason, but before you go, any mention I see of Ross, I, and I've looked, there are always people mentioning creepy, saying just... he's creepy, he's off putting and stuff. So um, at least he can do his job. We can give he's him that. He's great at his job. He's, he's great at his job. Great job. You know? Not not quite a Gary. Gary can yeah. work harder and play harder. Um, one thing I really have to, because we we we've watched kind of Fraser go through this evolution of of not quite getting it at the beginning, you know, editing wise, production wise, you know, I, he's had a lot of experience on yachts and stuff, um, but kind of coming into his own as the Chiefs do, and I think it's going to be really nice to watch him continue in season eleven. I can't wait, especially with Captain Carey's energy too. He's gotten to work with three captains, technically four, if you include Sean too, right? So he's worked with four captains on the show. Um, but one of these, one of the nice surprises of the season was having Tyler come into the show. Um, it was more of a gentler kind of castmate. But 
last night, I really, really loved hearing Fraser and Tyler's stories about where they are with who they are, their sexuality, their journeys, Fraser coming out, Tyler getting ready to tell his mom. I mean, obviously, you, you've got you've got to tell someone. This is on national, if not international television, right? Everyone's going to know after this airs. So I love tell her quickly. I love when people do reality TV and and – and don't think about that, you know? Right. <laughs> I just, I, I have the secret. Don't tell anyone. And it's like, they, you just I don't think, there. yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't think they understand how much just, just talking about that. So generally, and the, the way they were, they were speaking about it. Cause it's so much easier now to, to talk about those things on, on network television and stuff, but life in um, general, I, I remember, I mean, when I was in high school, people didn't really talk about it. We, I was in theater in high school. We had two guys in there that were obviously gay. We all knew it was gay, but like they were gay, but like we couldn't talk about it. We couldn't say it. It just was that short of a time period. It was very different, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and now it's like, yeah, you have people sharing their stories and talking about openly on television and stuff. It's, times have in some ways times have changed very quickly um now granted people did a lot of work up to that point to right. make that you know change happen but are you okay <laughs> yeah my my bell is it has a mind of its own over here oh, oh, it's, it's going moving out. by itself <laughs> i was like what is happening <laughs> elaine what did you send me elaine sent us haunted bells <laughs> haunted bells <laughs> God. <laughs> no but um i think it was great hearing their story and uh, how nice was it the moment like he calls his mom he's not really to have he really can't have the conversation his mom knows what the conversation is going to be but she says i'm with your granny right now like like we can't have this big talk i know you want to have it's not the setting for it but then she threw out there i'm your mother you know i love you no matter what like basically saying like we're gonna talk about it i know and i love you and don't worry and like and you know what saw like so much weight lift off his shoulders oh like. my god and i know you know like i grew up in a very religious household too but at the end of the day that it's it's really if you have that supportive family you are so lucky but just to hear them just talk about these things so nonchalantly fraser's like oh yeah well when i it really does help someone else out who's watching this it there really does and, there, and yeah. i tweeted that last night and just very um that was a kind of nice moment from this for this from the this episode at least well that and, and no go go ahead no i would say that and then watching our big you know muscle uh charter guests just turned out to be like lovely little people <laughs> yeah they're like sweethearts uh, yeah, we love them real quick on fraser too we were talking about like his season and his growth and I, I tweeted about this and Fraser. We won't ever look it. at this photo again. Okay, we're banning the photo from the show. Uh, no more pasta photos, guys. <laughs> Don't eat pasta on below deck. Jason will catch you and he will put it on the show. I'll post no, it but, everywhere. Um, he, I posted something and Fraser even liked it. Uh, but I mentioned, you know, what a great arc. We saw him go from, you know, a struggling new leader to someone who, like, realized the potential that we all saw in him back when he was just a, a, a crew member and we were like that guy should be chief stew one day um he went through the growing pains he's going to have more growing pains like let's there the seasons to come we're gonna see more growth happening that's part of growing that's part of the journey of being a great leader but to me his number one accomplishment was when Haley was talking to him and she was just saying how much she loved working under him and his his leadership and his guidance and it's like, yeah, if you if you can be a leader who people want to follow, that that's worth everything. You know? uh, and it's going to be so nice to watch him come into season 11. It's so great to watch this, you know, to watch him go from being a second stew to a chief stew, struggle a little bit at the beginning, come out on top, no pun intended, come out on top. And then come into <laughs> come in this, this is this is anchor watch, guys. We gotta throw something so unnecessary. <laughs> so unnecessary. Because I don't even know if that's true. You might want to come out on the bottom. Oh my know. goodness. But oh my goodness. Then, then season eleven to watch him. And I really think we're going to see him shine. 
even just his like little one-liners towards the end of the season fraser is delivering i cannot wait to see him. yeah the last few episodes we got his personality back he was obviously more relaxed um Haley and tyler like we don't normally keep a whole crew could we please for next season have fraser please. Haley, and tyler like and that's the thing too is like they were Haley and tyler were like these like it almost reminds me of like a disney movie or something where there's always <laughs> that that comic duo like in almost every you know disney movie um those two every time we cut to them they were having fun they were getting into antics and it was like they both cared about their jobs they were good people they're both i mean they're both people i would totally 100 percent love to have a drink with go party with have fun with um I don't and, know if i could handle it but i would love to <laughs> well i feel like we could handle hanging out with tyler he's gentle Haley, I think, would get us in trouble. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, we'd end up in, in probably. I mean, let's not forget, she instigated the cake fight. So uh, <laughs> but, but... that kind of my anxiety went so high during that cake fight. I was like, this is a mess. This is a mess. This is a mess. You guys have to work in the morning. This is a mess. My OCD was going crazy. Anyway, before we go any further with this episode, let's welcome Captain Sean. Yes, we have him from Monaco tonight. Monaco. Hello. <laughs> Hey, Captain Whoa, Sean. Look at that backdrop. Now, Welcome ooh, to Monaco. Are, are they getting ready for the Grand Prix over there? Yeah, so the um, I, I posted on Instagram a couple of shots of the uh, the grandstands that they're getting ready. But yeah, they're getting it's it's almost full on Grand Grand Prix season over here. The grandstands are coming up. Uh, the pomp and circumstances. It's really an amazing show that they put on here. I feel like right now this shot. I feel like all of a sudden. We look like a legit news source. We've yes. got Sean, right, yeah. foreign country. He's dressed From up. We're, you know, it's like kind of brighter here in the studio. He's at the nightfall. Uh, like almost he could be coming to us from like a warring country or something. I was trying to say, you just need a rocket attack behind. Yeah, yeah, rocket. yeah. Well, no, <laughs> that's one. we don't need that. Meanwhile, Sean is like in the lap of luxury right now. <laughs> Sean, um, I have, first of all, I have some questions for you. Okay. Well, first of all, I'm I'm envious of you right now because um, I really well, want to be there. here. I know I wanted to be there, but we will um we will both be there sitting right there. I hope doing this show in September. Yes, that'll be fan. Yeah, hundred percent. That's going to be. And great. Captain Sean, you you told you told us before in previous episodes, but for those who are joining us now, why are you in Monaco right now? Well, I'm in Monaco for um, on Thursday evening. They're going to have uh, the uh, the Monaco Yacht Club has these, this thing called the Explorer Awards. And it was started about three, four years ago for vessels that have done exploration or have done humanitarian or scientific stuff. And this year, Latitude, my old boat, has been nominated for an Explorer Award. So we're uh, I think we're in it for a couple of different categories. And the award is given to given to um, to the recipient by prince albert of monaco and wow. the owner of latitudes unfortunately he's unable to be here so i will hopefully be winning the award on thursday so fingers crossed that oh my God. we this will all the, be rooting for award. you all yeah. i can think of all i can think of is when um, raiders of the lost ark lost out to chariots of freaking fire you know I mean, <laughs> I would be like, do you know just really quick sidetrack story when i went to london to perform i my friend was in the play chariots of fire which they really reenacted chariots of fire they had a track going through the audience and they started off the show by warming up and stretching and then they would start slowly like running around this track until they were all in a group together and that's how they started the show it was the most amazing thing i've ever seen oh, wow. anyway um i can't believe they made that into a play but anyway um, well, i hear that broadway's doing um asses of fire the terrence and phillips story so anyway <laughs> Oh, anyway, boy. we have some questions for you tonight, Captain Sean. Good <laughs> um, So my first question, I have a, a few, and I have one myself, but um, we have a question uh, from Maria, and she said, if you could pick a three-course meal to have when you're on Charter, what would it be? Oh, God, that's a good, that's a really good question. And I would have to say it would wholeheartedly depend on the chef who was on board. 
because I've got different guys that are um, have different different specialties. Probably one of the best chefs I ever worked with was a gentleman named Paul Karlstrom, and he did uh, uh, Paul. His signature dish was like this Alaskan king crab um, as as an entree. Uh, three courses. What else? Um, uh, just a basic. He would do. God, I can't what, even think. What, what would you want? Are you a meat eater, Captain John? No, so if it was up to me, I would have a Caesar salad, a ribeye, and a creme brulee. That oh. sounds like a perfect meal. That would be me. That's um, I I will join you for that meal, Captain John. That sounds perfect. <laughs> that sounds great. Would, so here's the other question too. Like, I I would have to guess that part of like the perfect meal would would also depend on like where in the world you are because. Well, You're probably going to get, you know, different ingredients, you know. I have had that meal at the North Pole and we were and that was for um, a, a Neil's uh, a, a, his birthday. We had it up at, uh, at 82 degrees and the chef Marcus pulled out this. It was literally like 500 euro. So about 600 at that time, 650 dollar a kilo Kobe beef steak. Oh and when God. you ate it, it was like meat butter. I mean, it was, oh. that was bar none, one of the best pieces of um, of meat I've ever had. Jason, why don't you tell us about some of the best pieces of meat you've um, ever had? Let's see. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can do that on this show, but oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, we've been kind of like G tonight, rated G. I know. <laughs> and and, and uh, Jen even tossed out there how the sausage is made and no one touched it. <laughs> No, no, we didn't. no one touch the sausage. <laughs> and usually I would. Um, yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Sean, I do have to ask you, and I think we've asked you this before, but I saw someone tweet me about it, and I kind of wondered this too. What is your favorite place to be, to captain a yacht, basically, in the world? Oh, 100% the Arctic. Oh, really? Yeah. 100%. Why, is it for the views, the challenge, what's... It, it's 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 everything it's the wildlife um on land and and in the water it, it's it is um just the landscape spectacular i'd probably say svalbard just because logistically it's it's a it's relatively accessible whereas something like the northwest passage is really you got to be committed for for something like that but just a challenge for for everything um if uh if you want a, like a warm venue Probably uh, a couple of places in the South Pacific. Vanuatu is really interesting. You got volcanoes, and it's if anyone's ever read Tales of the South Pacific by James Michener, it's right out of that book. It's 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 spectacular. So that would be probably be probably Vanuatu and um, and the Arctic. Wow, wow! And Sean, I know you had a question right tonight. Yeah, so I got a couple questions. One was uh, it was kind of. It was um, basically it was one of the questions was how bad is it when a line handler misses misses his mark? So well, we saw that we saw that just in this past episode. Yeah, he was trying to throw in which you know he doesn't normally do, or we haven't seen that from him before. But yeah, I'm I'm really curious. Or is it based on the situation too? Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, like sometimes I mean, if there's no wind and you're just alongside the dock, and honestly, that's when I've seen the most mistakes made. Because they'll just like go to throw the line over, and they forget that they either don't put it through the chalk, so they just hand it over the rail, and all of a sudden they realize, oh shoot, we didn't put it through, the, we didn't put it through the hole, um, or or two. Anyway, we're going to touch that one. Or, no, or two, we're not going to touch that one. That's not yeah. happening. <laughs> they'll they'll throw the line over and won't tie it, and it will just shoot right out and keep on going, and then they lost the whole line or. Or haven't tied the heaving line onto the line, and that actually, honestly, most of the time happens when it isn't that critical. Sometimes, but if it happens up in the bow or any time that the lines are in the water near the propellers, that can take a, a relatively calm docking and turn it into something else. Because all of a sudden, if they don't let me know that that's happened, or if I haven't seen that, the danger of sucking that line in the propeller, and then we're dead in the water, or it could get sucked into the bow thruster, and then that's out of the game as well. So you've got to be, um, it, it's the line handlers can make or break you when you're coming into the dock. Now, when it's windy, when it counts, that's Which we also when, saw. 
which we also saw this episode. I mean, everything we're talking about right now. I love this. Sorry. Yeah. And that's when it really, really counts is that they've, they've got to, they've got to hit that mark. But luckily, you know, and and you usually like when you, when, when you need to, when you need to hit that mark is you put your best, you put your best guy up. Well, that's not entirely true. It's like, um, uh, it's, it's also, uh, a really good time to um, build confidence. And if you get a, if this is what I've actually done this, if you've got a crew member that's maybe having like a rough week or um, is that they're having trouble with their confidence. If you put them in a situation that's critical, like the entire boat is depending on them to make, to make that mark. Uh, I, I rarely have seen anyone fail when, when given that much responsibility and they come away from that feeling, feeling like, okay, they've, they've, they've actually, they've accomplished something and that they did, they did something important because it was, because it was important. Now, sometimes yeah. you can, you know, if, if the, if the wind's howling, I can get it close enough where they can feel like, I mean, I give them, I give them every opportunity to get that, to get that line on there and, and then and do it right. But, um, but yeah, so that's, it's, it's critical. The, uh, the two lines that are critical are um, if, if those four and a half running springs, once those lines are on, you can pretty much control the boat in, in any direction. And those are, those are my two go-to lines, like the a bow line or a stern line in certain situations are also can be critical, but as long as you have the spring lines, which is the lines that are in the middle, you can control that boat and just and hold that bow or hold that stern in. Yeah. God, that's, that's crazy. Cause watching that on the show this week, it was kind of crazy to see, you know, how that, that, that. Well, and, that and my thing was so like, much. is this, is this a dire emergency or not? And then, even Captain Lee said, eh, he pulled it back quickly and he gave it another shot. But yeah. sometimes, like, it does look like when the winds are really crazy or something, it looks like we got to nail this guy. It's like, we can't be yeah. screwing around. <laughs> we oh, can't. There's had, no, I, no second chances there. No, that I've shot- had, just, oops, sorry, one more, just, just real quick on that. I've had situations where, like, on Baraska, my big sailboat, where I didn't have a bow thruster. And we were literally like, I mean, and that, once the wind got a hold of that bow, it just whipped right by. And then you're like, okay, you can't miss. And that was a, we were coming into this dock in Italy. It was like two in the morning and we had nobody to catch our line. So I had this guy, Kieran up in the bow and he had to go. I, I said, I'm going to get the bow as close as I can. And you're going to have to lasso the piling. Oh, gee. And he freaking nailed it like right out of, um, right, right out of something right out of Yellowstone. I mean, wham. And then, and then <laughs> lasso that piling locked it right off and then we whipped that stern right in off that but yeah that was that was uh that was a hairy docking but it worked out fine well captain sean thanks for be- what time is it right now in monaco it's about oh it's close to about 5 a.m oh boy <laughs> <laughs> it's 5 a.m Jeez. well captain sean i know we have you you're going to be at the the palm beach but you're everywhere it, it's but it's the palm beach every- show. You'll be here this week, and we have a ton of questions. I get to ask you in person, yeah. and I cannot wait. I have a list. Um, I'm trying not to to have them all on here because I wanna I wanna save it specifically for this vlog that we're gonna post. And I'm jealous. Um, Captain but- Sean's taking you to see some stuff too, right? Yes. Oh yeah, there's some really cool boats. I want to like let's like I want to get on board. Um, um, last couple of weeks ago, I met the captain at Arrow while I was here in Monaco. He's a great guy and we'll get on board that boat. It's a brand new fed ship, spectacular boat. Oh my God, I um, can't wait. Be able to take some photographs and get some video. That's going to be a lot of fun, but I still, I owed you one celebrity story. Oh yes. The celebrity story. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's it just, it's a, it's a quick one. So one of my all time favorite guests uh, on board the boat, I'm the, uh, I'm going to out her a little bit. She was just, she's a wonderful person. He, she and her husband are great. Her family's wonderful. Uh, she's a producer of, um, uh, of like the meet the parent movies. Uh, anyway, great, great person. And so we were in St. Bart's and we're having a party on board. We had like guys like Jimmy Buffett. We had, um, the, uh, speaking of more cowbell, we had, um, the cast of, um, Blades of Glory, but no Will Ferrell, unfortunately. Oh, wow. And the, and we had Lauren Michaels, the founder of Saturday oh. Night Live. So anyway, 
I go up to the table and, um, and she introduces me. She says, this is, this is Lord, like Lauren Michaels. And I said, I said, oh, I know, I know who you are. I've always been a fan. And he says, Oh, thank you very much. And I said, how is everything? And he goes, Oh, with the writer's strike and, you know, and these actors and, and I start laughing and he looks at me and he, and he, he goes, excuse me. I said, no, I meant, how's the food? You know, so <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, well, the food's really good. I go, good. Cause that's all I was asking you about. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, just a really that's, that's like I got a, a couple few more, but that was just that was just a quick a quickie one. one. Yeah. But anyway, Sean when, and one more thing, just saying like when to, when um uh Jen was saying about the community here on board Anchor Watch, which is a great community, and not all below deck communities. <laughs> Are, are really nice i've uh, i've gotten occasionally i've uh, i've gone out there and and gotten dirty <laughs> in the gutter on reddit or on facebook and some of those oh. facebook groups i mean those groups out there you can are dive brutal. deep into that yes I, they i'm are sure brutal but everyone on here you guys are the best and i appreciate your comments and um, we have a good crowd and sean i have a lot a of questions crowd. to ask you in person to catch it on video you know, we've done like kind of a brief thing before, but this is going to be, I, I hope, the best thing we've done yet, of course. And then I think, you know, uh, Lenka in, in the chat, I, is this? Um, oh, is that Lenka? From, from Asteria, yeah. Motor Yacht Asteria? That's, yeah. Yes. Oh, my gosh. So I had the pleasure of going on Motor Yacht Asteria in New York. I don't think I even posted anything about it. I still have a blog I could put up uh, about. It was an amazing experience. Thanks to you and everyone on board who who was so welcoming to show show us around. Um, but Lenka watches up and at him. And she was yeah. um, excited. And we got to meet her when we were up in New York. Uh, well, right Lenka, after BravoCon. Lenka specifically said was like, that was Adam is, the, is, is, is like really bright as her day. She listens to him every morning when she's in the laundry doing all the, the laundry <laughs> student duties. Doing and the most important job on the ship. Doing yeah. the most important job on board the ship. Oh, that's great. Hi, Lenka. Hey, this well, we're awesome. all going to have our fingers crossed Thursday, guys. Sync up with Monaco time so we're not crossing them too early or too late. And uh, <laughs> we'll be and rooting for you, Captain I got Sean. great tux. I'll send pictures with that. I bought, I got the, my new Dries Van Naughton tux. Oh, yes. You oh, we need pictures. We Guys, need pictures. follow him on Instagram. Captain Sean takes us on his trip and posts a lot of stuff. It's so cool. And quite frankly, we get to see an amazing uh, life that a lot of us won't be, <laughs> won't be visiting or uh, in person. So check it out. You guys have to follow him um, at the at Excitement Factory, right? Excitement Factory. It's not Excitement Factory on Instagram. Instagram. Captain Sean. And everything is below, too, in the description if you want to see – Captain Sean did an oh. amazing talk um, in the, about the ocean plastics not so long ago. That's in the description below. Worth Avenue Yachts, if you want to check out what's happening at the boat show this weekend, that's in the description below. Check those out. It's fun. If you just want to know the yachting industry a little better, it gives you a better understanding of what we're watching every week on TV. I did. And one other thing, too, if you go to um, Lux SF, I did a, a one-hour podcast on connoisseurship. And, I'll, yes. uh, I'll, I'll, and that I haven't posted on um, – uh on instagram but i but i will so if you go to Lux, yes Lux sf because that's that's actually not a bad not a bad talk and then after this i'm gonna i'm gonna drop that in the description below because i did listen to that and it was phenomenal so oh thanks yeah thank so you for cool. that sean and we will see you uh next week you'll see him next not week. next week we won't see here. everyone for two weeks we're off for two weeks no, I'm we're saying you'll see so, Captain Sean though in a few days. Oh, we'll see Captain Sean in a few days, and we're gonna post instead of uh, Anchor Watch next week. We will be posting um, a vlog with Captain Sean, so I think that will be kind of fun. All right, All right, we'll let you go on with your day, and and best of luck for the awards. We hope it's it, it's coming. It's well deserved, I'm sure. Fingers fingers crossed. Fingers All right, crossed. everybody, have a great All night. Right. Night, right, Captain. Bye. Thank you for joining us. All right, Josh. So to jump back in to this really quick. Um, this below deck as we wrap up this hour we've been on here tonight. Um, it's been kind of a fun episode. We've had lots of different kind of things happening. It's nice getting guests. It kind of makes it feel like uh, it helps make the finale feel a little bigger, a little more, uh, yeah, a little more important. grand. Yeah, a little more <laughs> grand for the finale. No, a, an, another couple of, uh, 
couple that we didn't mention that we just got to talk about. Uh, ben and this and, whole Camille thing. And, and the Leanne thing. Yeah. So when he said red flags at the beginning of the episode, I'm like, just now? Oh. Like, well, and the just thing that now? Me is Camille is making it very apparent. Like, this ain't going anywhere. She flat out basically told him that. Like, hey, let's not have this big talk. Like, we're going to have fun on this trip together. But it he's so just awestruck about her that it's making him look pathetic. You know, it's like, dude, yeah. and you have this girl who seems really great. Who's so into you. Why aren't you going for this? Instead, you're going just what thinking he, about, cool. you know, I mean, to each their own, apparently, according to his Instagram, he was in the Dominican Republic after with her. I don't know what's going on with them right now. Again, this was filmed last year. So yeah. everyone's doing something different now. Or someone different. Who knows? I <laughs> who knows at this point. Hey. Um I'm so glad. I, I want to bring this up really quick before we finish kind of like jumping into the episode really quick because there's not too much to talk about. I'm kind of glad we got little, a little wrap up with Jen and and Sean on some things we saw too, but um every time we have cast members on Watch What Happens Live the ratings are so good. And if you ever want to see what's going on with the ratings, follow TV Deets. Also, they have another uh, Twitter called Below Deck Sailing, which keeps you updated on all Below Deck information. So go follow them because they're truly fun to watch. But um, yeah, I mean, we saw some big tips. And we've talked about like what we want to see from next season and and Fraser and and just... When it comes to Below Deck and reunions, I don't always love the reunions. First of all, they're always somewhere different. They're always like zoomed in. They're always like they have yeah. like, you know, shitty service. So you can't really, <laughs> you know, they're on a yacht. They're working. They're filming. This year, they're obviously very busy. I know they just finished filming uh, season 11. I don't know how many people would have shown up. But I feel like when, especially this season, we kind of got a wrap up. But when they walk off the dock and we see them leave. I feel like there's a conclusion. You say goodbye. This is it. We're done. You know, half the cast doesn't come back for the next season anyway. So it's yeah. not really pertinent that we have that reunion. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm ready to move on to the next, uh, you know, and Colleen here asked, do you guys do Anchor Watch for Selling Yacht? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. We will. We'll be just taking a short break while Bravo takes a new below deck break. And when new episodes start coming, for other franchises will be there. Um, and then this is one. Okay. So Elizabeth asked this and I, I wanted to point this out. We were teased with uh, everyone abandoned ship, abandoned you know, ship voice. Um, we were led to think there was some kind of emergency. Elizabeth, I guess they just creatively uh, edited and, and tagged us, you know, got us hooked. And so, yeah, I, I, I don't know what happened there. I think maybe, I, I don't even know what happened because we're not talking about like Vanderpump Rules and Scandaball where they picked up cameras really quick and then re-edited the whole, the whole, you know. Well, and I'm wondering if it was, season, but they took something out of context and just used it. And like, if he was joking around with like, while in between charters or something and was joking as everyone abandoned ship, you know, they could have took a moment and just, oh, that's, he said it. Let's grab this. We'll snip it out and we'll play it in audio later in the teaser trailer. And well, he's known to do to run drills and stuff too, like back in, a, in the earlier been. season. So maybe he came back on board the ship and he tested them. And maybe that was something that we didn't get to see. But that's that's crazy when you get to see that. Yeah. Well, there's an old adage when about theater. It's like you can, if you bring a gun on stage, it has to go off by act three or whatever. Like you can't bring a gun on stage and not have it go up there has to be a reason for everything that's presented to the audience right so we, that kind of felt like they brought a gun on stage and it didn't go off and it's like womp womp what's so <laughs> dissatisfying so i love when you compare things to the stage oh my god i'm a weirdo <laughs> makes sense it really makes sense okay so we're going to be back in two weeks i think april 10th so we will be back on the 11th to start recapping Below Deck Sailing, which is where this all started, Josh. What are we, a year and a half in of doing Anchor Watch? Has it been that long? It's been I a don't, second. I don't think a year and a half, but, well, no, we're, get, we're getting close to it. It's uh, been a minute. It's been a minute. 
yeah, it's it's been a, yeah, maybe it is a year and a half now, guys. But wow, okay, I feel so old. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I'm gonna just be quiet. Oh my! I'm God. gonna be quiet. Shut up. <laughs> All right. So if we had to give this season, oh, let's talk about this really quick. Will we see Rachel again? We've talked about this so much so, this season. You know, she had, had she had a blowout with Bravo, uh, a very public one, where she yes. called them out for not paying them as much as other cast of m- with much Different less shows. ratings. Yeah, getting paid, and they're not paying which the Blow Deck people any kind of money really or fair amount. She felt. For, for a cast that makes that gets the highest ratings on the channel, um, which we know ratings equals money for advertisement. So um, for advertising fees. And so there's definitely all signs point to there should be more money there. Why aren't they getting paid enough? Um, but I thought it was interesting. She left this season too, saying, and this was filmed before the altercation she had on public. Right. You know, with right. Bravo. She was saying, I need a break from this. I've been going, going, going. I'm, I'm going to take a break. And then maybe when I get bored, I'll go back to yachting. So, I mean, I would love to get her all, on and chat with her. She, I, I would I mean, too. You know, that might not be far from the realm of possibility. So we yeah. can see if we can get I mean, her we love on. her. She's our favorite. Selfishly, I want her back. I know she might be tired of doing the show, but. I think she might not be in season 11 just if I had to guess, because yeah. all of this commotion happened right before BravoCon, and they filmed season eleven just now in the past six weeks. Actually, the the, the past six weeks they've been filming. Um, so yeah, I'm just I'm really curious. You know, we got we got to bring her back in some way, shape, or form. If she's not on eleven, we better see a triumphant return of Chef Rachel on twelve. Um, I mean, I mean, who chefs are so hard to get to come by, right? She she provided us with like good below deck TV, very Bravo TV at the beginning, and we've watched her grow too, which is a great story. It's like watching Fraser from being a second stew again, struggling through the season, you know, and now going into season eleven, probably going to be, if I had to guess, probably one of the best chief stews we're going to see besides Kate. Yeah, we. Uh... It would be a bummer. Not I mean, reg- I mean, she's a gifted chef, but put that aside. She's just also an entertaining person. When I'm watching a show, I want to be entertained. You know, I'm sitting yeah. down for hell. Yeah. You know, for weeks watching this stuff. I want to be entertained. You know, uh, we deserve it as viewers. Um, give us your best. And so Bravo, if you need to go apologize for whatever you did, <laughs> go make it right. Go be a big person and get us back what we want. <laughs> so, yeah. Get us back what we want, and please bring uh, you. They have such an opportunity right now to bring back Fraser, Tyler, Haley. I mean, this deck team, they're so good. They were so good this season, too good. I want to see the deck team struggle next season, and I want to see the interior kill it. And if you have the interior team of Fraser, Haley, Tyler, and then bring on someone new, just a a wild card, a little wild card, maybe not so wild as like Camille, but (laughs) you know, bring a wild card on. I think it'll be a good season for sure. Yeah, maybe like a real pirate with no hands. They've got two hooks. Just the hook. Gotta, yeah, yeah. And a peg. Peg they leg. Try to help serve plates Arr. and find China and stuff. And they're breaking. <laughs> Who knows? It's getting late. I'm getting weird. Uh, for everybody watching, uh, for those of you guys in the replay crew, please hit the like button. Thank you if you have. Um, comment, comment, comment. We will be responding. Um, we're going to have a little extra time because we're going to have a break here. So we'll we definitely have, have break. time to respond. Um, and follow us, follow at Jason Barrett or at C Josh go on Twitter. Um, we're there and I love interacting with you guys. I love hearing your thoughts and I love joking back and forth with you. Um, yeah. What else, Jason? Yeah. That's it. That's it. Yeah. We subscribe to up and Adam live up yes. and Adam. Adam will we be have... very happy. If we bring him some new subscribers yes. from our naughty yachties. So and we have please. two channels. We have two channels and you might see Josh and I on the second channel too, doing another show, but that'll be coming up. Um, we have two channels right now. One's more behind the scenes and kind of like uh, more cash, you know, over here on up and Adam live. It's a little more profesh. So we like to keep it that way, but um, we will be back in two weeks to start recapping Blow Deck Sailing, which we have Daisy, Colin, 
Uh, Gary, of course, Captain Glenn is back. Uh, a few other new people yeah, coming Colin, back. You didn't think Colin would be back? and I didn't Colin's think so either because I thought he was uh, – but again, they've probably filmed this a long time ago, right? Because I'm like watching his YouTube. Colin has a really good YouTube called uh, Sailing Parlay, Parlay, Parlay Revival. That's what it is um, on YouTube. It's a great, great channel about him kind of like re rehabbing. What do you call that? Rehabbing a, a, a sailboat and sailing it around the world, basically. So, And Chris, I don't know if you're teasing me. What time is the replay? Anytime you go to YouTube and look up <laughs> this show and you play it, that's what time the replay is at. I feel like you're teasing me. Chris. We'll start whenever you want. Whenever you want. Whenever you whenever decide you to want. push play, we'll start. We'll be there with you in the middle of the night if you need comforting. You could play it. Or if you need to wake up with us, we'll 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 be there for you in the morning. Um, yeah, love you guys. Thank you. And uh here's to a great season, and we're looking forward to many more with new yes. captains, new crew. Um yeah, but first up, sailing yacht in two weeks. And pay attention to the uh, Up and Atom community tab. In the next two days, we're going to give away two items um, from our new merch, our Anchor Watch merch. So pay attention because it will pop up real quick. There'll be a question, and the first few people to answer the question, we're going to be doing some giveaways. So that'll be really fun. And guys, we will see you back in two weeks. Thank you so much to all of our listeners on the podcast because we really appreciate you guys Yes, uh, who listen to this in their ears uh, on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your shows. Also, our amazing crew here uh, in the chat. Our all of our mods. mods. Thank you. Which we really don't need mods on this chat. We love our mods. Every once in a while, though, someone needs to be smacked down a little and they take care of it. So just a little bit. You. Yeah, just a little, a little bit. Slight, light spanking. <laughs> all right guys have a great night and we'll see you on april 11th good night josh